Hello everyone, welcome to our talk. The topic we are going to talk about is construct make oil cyber range for red blue teams. I am Yixuan Chen. I researched this topic with my partner Yan Dalin. We are currently in turn of Cyber Technology Research Team. More and more malicious apps and APT attack now target make OS and making it crucial for researchers to develop threat combination on make OS. In this research, we attempt to construct a make OS cyber range for the evaluation of rating and blue team performance. For the rating part, we made an empirical study about recent APTs related to make OS based on the MITRE attack matrix. Then, we implement a goal based rating emulation tool for macOS and repurpose several real world malware to enrich our playbooks. Moreover, we designed a storyline for the whole attack life cycle. For the blue team part, we surveyed and integrated several tools to detect the attack and label miter attack techniques. Finally, we present an attack defense association graph for evaluation. At the end of this talk, we will also release two mentioned in this talk, including a Tech Defense Association graph, goal-based rating emulation tool, integration of several tools, and intent to label the attack techniques. Here is the all night today. There are many forecasts. First, we will talk about our proposed attack defense association graph, then the rating part including three kinds of rating tool and our attack storyline. Third, the blue team part, we will introduce and make a comparison of some analysis tool on macOS. In the end, we have a demo of our cyber range. There are more people and companies using macOS currently. While we don't have much experience for macOS attack and defense, that is, Blue team may not be familiar with macOS attack and defense techniques, and tools for investigating are not sufficient as well. On the other hand, there are most threat actors conducting APTs target macOS recently, such as APT28 and the various hacker groups. Thus, it's crucial for researchers to survey these attack techniques and develop threat countermeasure on macOS. All we want is to build a cyber range for red team and blue team. It can be used to test security products and tools, and it can also be used to train blue teams and investigate APT on Mac OS. Therefore, we have to build a realistic environment. We survey for the most common and critical technique for threat actors, including malware and APT reports. Not only malware itself, we also focus on life cycles such as discovery, persistent, and lateral movement techniques. We mapping them to the MITRE attack matrix and establish an attack defense association graph. It can give us an overview of the whole attack and describe the relationship between APT actors, techniques, evidence, and analysis tool. We will discuss it later. Here is the red blue team workflow we propose. There are four steps. First of all, we have to build an environment with one or more macOS devices. It can be real machine or virtual machines. Then the red team can attack with our rating emulation tool or any general red. On the other side, the blue team collect any possible evidence for detection and labeling. Finally, we generate an attack defense association graph for evaluation. We have a rating evaluation tool and several repurposed malware for ratings and a modularized tool, which is an integration of several macOS forensic tools for blue teams. They can easily extend or replace our tools with their own tools, no matter rating or blue team tools for our cyber range. Next, my partner Yan Dan will talk about the Attack Defense Association graph. Hi, I'm Yan Tali from SciCraft. Let me introduce an analysis graph, which is the association graph of attack and defense. This graph provides an essential function for the blue team to assess the attack. 
Before explaining how to generate a graph, let me point out some of the advantage of the association graph. First, we can identify the commonly used technique by the attacker. Second, we can also set the development direction of forensic tools. Last, the importance of each technique can be made more apparent as the number of malware samples increase. Later, we'll illustrate these points with some examples so you can have a better understanding of these benefits. Our generating idea is to find the relationship between the attack side and defense side, so we can use relationship for further analysis. Most people will come up with this kind of graph. This graph shows the relationship between the attack side and defense side with basic information. We can see that there are three malware on the attack side and two forensic tools on the defense side. The graph shows that tool A, for example, can detect malware A and malware B, and tool B can detect malware A and malware C. However, as you can see, the relationship of detection is too abstract, so we came up with the graph to show more detail about the relationship. This is the graph we came up with. It shows how each tool detects the malware. On the attack side, you can see that we decompose malware's behavior into a list of techniques. Similarly, each forensic tool has its capability to collect different kinds of evidence. So, from this graph, we can know that evidence A, for example, can potentially detect technique A and technique E. So, we can conclude our generating idea into the following step. First, we need to identify the attack techniques from each malware. Then, we can find useful forensic tools to generate the evidence we need. Last, we link the attack techniques with the evidence to build out the relationship of detection. Next, we're going to focus on the list of techniques that we're using. The techniques we're using are from the attack framework provided by MITRE. ATT&CK stands for Adversarial Tactic Techniques and Common Knowledge. This framework has the enterprise metrics that includes most attack techniques for each platform, including Mac OS. The best thing about this framework is that it can also identify all of the techniques that the malware use according to various reports. So, we can then easily plot any malware onto the graph we just introduced. For example, we can find all of the techniques that OS X Ocean Lotus D used by looking at this page. As a result, we can plot Ocean Lotus D onto a graph like this. Next, we are going to focus on the forensic tools and evidence on the defense side. These are the simplified version of different kinds of forensic tools. We roughly categorize these tools into artifact collector, unified log system related, process and file event related, and network related. We are not going to talk about lots of detail about these tools at this time, we, but we will have a full comparison of each category later in this talk. These are the evidence generated by those tools. This part is quite tricky because unlike the attack framework, there is no standard of evidence list to follow. Therefore, we reference the outputs of each forensic tool and make this list, which can be changed later for the better. And here is an example of plotting Kima, a kernel extension that monitors the process, file operation, and network events onto our graph. Then, during our research and survey on macOS forensics, we combine several prominent malware and useful forensic tools onto the association graph. Now, we can have a rough overview of the relationship between the attack side and defense side in the real-world scenario. So, let's recap the advantage that we just mentioned. First, we can identify the commonly used technique by the attacker. 
Second, we can also set the development direction of the forensic tools. Last, the importance of each technique can be made more apparent as the number of malware samples increase. Let's illustrate the first point. If we look at a technique list, several parts are denser than others. We circle those parts with red. If we zoom in one of, one of those parts, we can see that the launch agent technique is used by three out of three malware. So it is relatively common technique for real malware. In addition, this technique can potentially be detected by four kinds of evidence. Therefore, we can assume that this technique is commonly used by malware but can be easily detected by several forensic tools. To illustrate the second point, we can look at a technique that are used by malware but can not be easily detected by any of the available evidence. We circle those parts with blue. If we zoom in one of those parts, we can see that it is hard to detect the obfuscated file or information technique due to its abstract definition and variability. However, we can set the detection of this technique as the forensic tool development direction. So we can try to utilize other technology such as machine learning to solve this problem. Last, with the example below, it is clear to see that as the number of malware samples increase, the importance of each technique can be easily determined by the density of the relationship between the malware and the technique. So these are the benefits of using the association graph. Next, my partner will talk about constructing cyber range for the red team. In this session, I am going to talk about our red team tool. The objective of this is to conduct realistic attack with a complete attack chain. It must be various and realistic. It should cover lots of techniques used in real-world malware. Thus, we collect and develop a series of writing tools, including open source red, repurpose real-world malware, and a self-made tool with a full attack storyline. Remote Administration Tool, or RED in short, is a tool that provides several features to control remote machines. There are a variety of features on RED, such as command execution, screenshot, and keylogger. It can be a kind of malware, and it is just the major target we want to apply to our cyber RED, since it can conduct more advanced attack depending on the attacker or RED team. There are lots of open source red for different platforms. We choose Evo OS X and Puppy as part of our rating tool. Evo OS X is for Mac OS and Puppy is a cross-platform red written in Python. We believe that this will develop red can be a reference for mobile developers. Therefore, the implementation and detection of this tool should be considered when developing blue team tools. Repurpose malware is to repurpose and reuse malware for the attacker and rating. As far as I know, this concept was first proposed by Patrick Wardor from Objective-C in RSA conference. He introduced it very detailed in his talk. We just introduced it briefly here. For attacker, repurpose malware can save lots of time and money to develop a new malware, and it can disguise themselves to some degree. On the other hand, for researchers, we can have a quick glance at its functionality and have an instant response to it. We apply it to our rating tool since we need realistic attack, and a repurposed mother malware is exactly what we want. With it, we can test routing tool with some state-of-the-art technique rapidly in our cyber range. We repurpose three modern macOS malware, including FruitFly, Apple Jesus and Decos. With our self-made C2 server, we can conduct lots of advanced attack instead of just executing. The following page are about the steps to repurpose the malware for writing. First, we have to analyze it to figure out its compatibility. This is not like the general analysis. 
we don't put much attention on reversing. We focus on the iteration of C2 command and its corresponding handlers. We have to find out its C2 server edges at first and patch it to our self-made C2 server. Then, we send different commands and monitor its operation to find out the C2 command and their arguments. We can monitor different kinds of events, such as network event, file event, keyboard event, and mouse event in this step. After analysis, we can build a custom C2 server to control this malware. The main problem of repurposed malware is that we don't know whether this custom C2 server can control the malware completely. In our experience, we usually reverse the binary to find some clues of the format of its protocol and C2 command before monitoring. This is actually a trade-off between analysis time and completeness. Finally, we can put this malware to our cyber range and the rating can control it to conduct some advanced attack with our custom C2 server. Next, we are going to talk about our rating emulation tool GDOR. Our rating emulation tool is named GDOR. It is developed in Go language and quotes compiled on Linux. It complements the open source Red Puppy and is equipped with lots of Mac OS techniques. Most importantly, it integrates with MITRE attack techniques. It can generate logs to recall every technique it uses. The main feature of GDOR are that it can keep persistence through launch agents, connect to C2 server automatically, and provide a usable interface for attacker, and look out SSH configuration and infect to other devices. We survey lots of malware report and sample to design the functionality of GDOR. The reason we developed it is that we need an emulation tool with a full attack storyline. It should be modularized so that we can equip new attack techniques on this at any time. We design an attack storyline for the rating. First, macOS Retain 1 download a file from a malicious site which can run a malicious command to download the latest GDOR from the C2 server and execute it. GDOR will look out its SSH configuration to infect other possible routines. We will discuss the storyline in detail later. Here is a MITRE attack matrix with only Mac OS related techniques. We highlight the techniques now implemented on GDOR. There is at least one technique highlighted in every category. This technique composed our attack storyline from initial access, persistent discovery to lateral movement. Let's talk about our attack storyline with GDOR. Here is the architecture of our storyline. There are two macOS devices, macOS 1 and macOS 2 as routines. Mac OS 1 has Golang compiler version 1.8. We use it to be an initial access point. Mac OS 2 has open SSH server and Mac OS 1 can connect to it through the SSH key store in Mac OS 1. Routin can use GDOR, RED, or repurposed malware to attack. Routin use our routine tool, Mac OS collector, and Mac OS monitor to collect evidence. We will have a demo of GDOR in this architecture later. For the initial access part, we use a CVE of Go language. It happened on Golang version before 1.8.4, and we use version 1.8 here. It can run malicious command upon gathering the Golang package. We upload a Golang package on GitHub, and it contains malicious command to download and execute GDOR from our C2 server. Unlike other language users, Golang users usually gather packages from GitHub. I think that it is reasonable to use this CVE as an initial access point. Here is a result of curl. It simply downloads and executes GDOR. With these two-step command execution, 
we can change the command or binary dynamically without updating the Golem package. It is worth noting that it can easily bypass MacOS defense technique Gatekeeper. Since Gatekeeper doesn't extend the file from a normal means such as curl. For the persistent part, GDoor Kit is persistent like other general backdoor. It copies itself to a secret directory and registers as a launch agent with run and load and key alive options. It will be executed automatically when the user logs in. On macOS, there are two common approaches to key persistent. There are launch agent and logging items. We notice that there are some samples that use both of them. We use only launch agents here, since we think that it may leave too many blueprints when using both of them. For the lateral movement part, GDOR look out SSH configuration and look for any possible macOS devices to infect. There is some information in the SSH configuration file, including hostname, IP address, unencrypted key, and remote username. GDOR try to infect to other devices with this information. It checks the operating system of the remote machine at first, then copy itself to the remote machine and execute. In our environment, we have two macOS devices connected together through SSH protocol. And one can connect to the other one with an unencrypted SSH key. Actually, using SSH to infect other macOS devices is not realistic at all, since only few people will enable SSH server on macOS. While this method can still work if the remote machine is Linux or any other operating system, we can execute command to download different red depending on their OS. Our C2 server provides an interactive shell to manage all routines. It can transfer files between server and routines, execute shell command, test screenshot, and provide a privileged escalation module. We will discuss the provision escalation module later. With the C2 server, the rating can use show command and screenshot to do some discovery on the routines. We collect a lot of co command we can use on macOS, such as UNAN, PS, ifconfig, and nested. The rating can use them to have a quick look at the routine and collect some credentials. After discovery, we can send sensitive data like SSH configuration file, SSH private key, back to the C2 server. For the privilege escalation part, GDOR uses a spoofing privilege helper to gain root privilege. It pretends to be the setting application to ask for authentication. In our story, the red team can use screenshot and show command to find a good opportunity. For example, when the user is watching YouTube, we can find the browser in the process list, and we can also take a screenshot to confirm it. Then, the red team can launch an Apple script which can pop out an authentication window through GDoor. After escalation, it executes GDoor with administrator privilege. Here is a screenshot of the situation mentioned previously. It pop out a privilege helper with sentence setting want to make sure to enter a password to allow this when the user is watching a YouTube video. After being executed as root, GDOR still kit is persistent at first. It registers as a launch daemon with run and load and key alive option and it will execute GDOR as root privilege on boot. Launch daemon is similar to launch agent, while it is a system-wide daemon provided by the administrator. Here is a demo of GDOR. Here is the files of GDOR. Server is a C2 server. It will serve the client and setting app. Client is our GDOR and setting app is the privilege escalation module. Now we execute a server. Here is a command you can use, including ls, 
to show the old clients and see command to connect. This is the first macOS routine, macOS 1. Its IP is 30.132. This is the second macOS routine, macOS 2. Its IP is 30.133. There is an open SSH server on macOS 2. We can connect to it through SSH config in macOS 1. Here is the config file, including hostname, username, and key file. Now we connect to macOS 2. Then, we are going to use the Golem package to infect. Here is the Golem package on GitHub. The command is in the library. It will be executed as a package gathering. The command will curl domain newton.sycarrier. We set it to our C2 server in etc host file. Now we use go get to get this malicious package. We can find curl output and some command from the screen. Now, let's check the connection from the server interface. There are several connections from both routines. Since the command is written in the initial function of a library, it will be executed several times, and each client will infect remote servers through SSH. That's why there are many clients here. Now, we can use a token to control it. Here is a command we can use. This client is in macOS v2. Then we try to connect to macOS v1. We can find that these two clients is in different directory, since the initial access ways are different. Now we can try some show command to do discovery. Then we check the launch agents. This is the PDS file we use to keep our persistent. We can find that the client disguised itself as a Dropbox application. It has run a low and key a live option here. Now we are going to use the privilege escalation module to get root privileges. We use an Apple script here. Here is the command we use. It executes a client with administrator privilege. We disguise it as a setting application. The main screen is the setting binary.
Now we can use command root to download the module and execute it. It passed out a privilege helper to ask for password. Then we can find a client with root privilege. Next, we are going to check the launch demons. Here is a PDF file in launch demons. It still executes the same binary with same options. This is a log file it generates. We can choose the file based on the client token. The log file record time and technique ID. Next, my partner is going to talk about the blue team. So, let's construct the cyber range with attack for the blue team. First, let's compare the forensic tools. We're going to compare these categories, including artifact collector, unified log system related, and process and file event related. The artifact collector collects the forensic evidence by gathering information from various system files, including system playlist, various database file, and the local file system. Automatic, OS query, and OS 10 collector are the free collecting tools that are available on GitHub. Automatic was developed by CrowdStrike since 2019. It is easy to use and highly configurable, so users can collect any part of the artifact from the system they want. Also, it uses a modular framework, so it can quickly add features and adapt changes to the newer version of macOS. Next, OS Query was developed by Facebook since 2014. The concept of, of OS Query is treating the OS as a relational database, so users can query any information from the system. It is highly customizable. It also has many other features, such as an interactive query console. And with the configuration, it can be used as the host monitoring daemon to schedule queries and record OS changes on, on the go. OS 10 Collector was developed by Yolk since 2014. It is easy to use and highly configurable, just like Automatic. However, the project has been archived, so it will no longer receive the updates. Now, let's compare each of these artifact collectors. Judging from the convenience, Automatic and OS 10 Collector are the most convenient because both of them have the pre-written script to run. On the other hand, OS Query needs the custom-made query file to perform the collection. However, it allows OS Query to have virtual, virtually no limit in terms of the forensic diversity. The forensic diversity of Automatic and OS 10 Collector is limited by the pre-written script unless you change them. For the project maintenance, Automatic and OS, OS Query are in active development, but OS 10 Collector is no longer maintained. Overall, I think Automatic provides sufficient forensic evidence and, at the same time, easy to use. Unified Log System Related Tool collects logs from Apple's new logging system introduced since macOS 10.12.
also known as macOS Sierra. Several tools are available, like Consolation 3, built-in log and console app, and the unified log reader. Because all of these tools collect the same unified log, we jump directly into the comparison. In terms of the core technology, Consolation 3 and the built-in log and console app are essentially the same, except Consolation 3 has a GUI front end which allow user to easily use various filter or predicates and support many displaying style. On the other hand, Unified Log Reader directly parses the Unified Logs database file. So, from the reliability standpoint, Consolation 3 and the built-in log and console app have the same core technology so they can parse the Unified Log flawlessly. Conversely, since the Unified Log Reader is still in alpha state, the changes with the different version of macOS often break things. This causes Unified Log Reader unstable. Process and File Event Related Tool monitors the process event and file operation events. There are many ways to monitor these events. You can use the built-in dtrace tool, kernel extension like Kima, or user application like Process Monitor or File Monitor. There are many built-in dtrace tools. Each of them has its capability to monitor certain events. Under the preferred arrangements, this tool can provide useful log for analysis. Keymon is a pre- and post codebat based framework for macOS kernel monitoring created by Didi. It can do more than just monitoring the process and file events, such as network traffic monitoring and mandatory access control policy monitoring. In general, from an attacker perspective, this framework can help achieve a more powerful rootkit. From the perspective of defense, Keymon can help construct more granular monitoring capabilities. Next, Process Monitor and File Monitor were developed by Objective-C, one of the biggest Apple security community, based on Apple's new endpoint security framework introduced in macOS 10.15 Catalina. It provides useful information about the events, such as PID, path, ancestry, arguments, code signing, and timestamp. The library also can be easily used in other applications so users can customize the monitoring events or output, output format. Judging from the convenience, both DTrace and Keymon require disabling system integrity protection to perform normally. Process Monitor and File Monitor work out of the box but require the latest macOS. In terms of information diversity, DTrace tools as we previously mentioned, provides a single piece of information. So we need to organize and combine the information to make it useful. Keymon provides the most diverse information. And with the skillful use of the tool, users can extract much useful information. Process Monitor and File Monitor provides the most essential information without being too complicated to use. I think the monitor application based on the endpoint security framework will become the trend as Apple is deprecating the kernel extension. Okay, after comparing forensic tools in each category, let's talk about the tool integration. Our motivation for integration is to simplify and automate various operations of each forensic tool. There are many problems that we found during the test of many machines. First, the tool installation process is cumbersome. Each tool has its own dependency and requirements, so the installation might not be straightforward. Second, the usage of each tool is quite different, so we sometimes have to check the manual of each tool. Next, repetitive action and command on many machines reduce productivity quite a lot. Last, the output format of each tool is different, so it is hard to combine and analysis data afterwards. So, our goals are the following. First, we want to easily install 
all requirements and dependency of each forensic tools. Second, we want to modularize each tool so we don't have to worry about the usage. Third, we want to have a customized running script so we don't have to memorize the commands of each tool. Last, we want to unify the output format so we can easily utilize the result. So, our results of the tool integration are macOS Collector and macOS Monitor. macOS Collector is the combination of Artifact Collector or the submodules, and the submodules are swappable and configurable. macOS Monitor is a combination of process and file system monitors, and it does the real-time parsing and filtering logs. Both tools are important for constructing the cyber range for the blue team. Finally, we are going to talk about the detection and labeling of MITRE ATT&CK ID. Our detection goal is to find malicious or potentially harmful behavior from the artifact and log. And we want to precisely identify the behavior and label it with MITRE ATT&CK ID. Finally, we want to visualize the results into the association graph for later analysis. We will utilize the cyber range for detection. First, we decided to use control environment, which is the virtual machine to do so. There's less noise inside the virtual machine, so we can more easily differentiate between benign and malicious behaviors. We construct the cyber range with the following architecture, which are collecting architecture, filtering and detecting architecture, and visualizing architecture. This is the collecting architecture. We can see that there are many operations between the before state and after state. We put our sample between the state. The sample could be the malware or series of attack techniques. We use the collector, which is the macOS collector, to collect the artifact before and after the execution of sample. The monitor which is our macOS monitor, execute right before the execution of the sample and collects any operation including process event and file system event. After executing the sample for a certain amount of time, we suspend our virtual machine and copy the memory file to the host machine. So, this is an overview of the collecting architecture. Next, we use the data collected from collecting architecture inside the filtering and detecting architecture and later visualizing architecture. Let's first talk about the filtering and detecting architecture. First, we need to filter out the previously existing artifact by comparing the artifact collected before and after the execution of the sample. Then, we call the combination of artifacts, logs, and memory collectively as evidence. Finally, we use the detecting rule to detect malicious behaviors and labeling them with MITRE ATT&CK ID. After the detection, we will generate the report to visualize to the visualizing architecture. The visualizing architecture converts converts generated report into an association graph for later analysis. So these are the overview of filtering and detecting architecture and visualizing architecture. Finally, let's check out some output of the cyber range. This is the association graph of EVO OS 10 generated by cyber range. And this is association graph of Fruitfly. Finally, this is the association graph of GDOR. Okay, let's jump into our demo. In this demo, 
we are going to run GDOR inside our cyber range. First, let's check out the cyber range task file for GDOR. In this file, we can specify the VM we want and the collector and monitor we use. Also, the snapshot we want to jump to. And we can set up the username and password for comments in different privilege. Besides, we can set the monitoring time for this task. In this case, two minutes. Then we can run the cyber range. It will start the VM and jump to the snapshot we want. Let's first open the terminal for the preparation. We can see that the cyber range is running and collector running the collector for the first time. Then we can start our GDOR server beforehand. We can see that the cyber range starts our monitor and ready to monitor for two minutes. Then we switch back to VM to run the vulnerable command. At this time, our victim already starts several connect connection to our GDOR server. We can see that by listing the connection. Then we choose one to connect. Notice that all the connections are in user permission. Then we can start to run several commands on our victim. We can list the process. We can check the network interface configuration. We can list the TCP connection. And we can check who am I to see our user permission. Next, we want to escalate our user permission. By running these commands, we can prompt user to enter their password. Then we can get the root account successfully. If we list our connection again, we can see that there is a connection with root permission. And we can connect and check who am I again. After the monitoring is completed, the cyber range will run the collector again to collect the artifact after running the sample. Last, the cyber range will run through the filtering and detecting architecture, and finally, the visualizing architecture. And it will show up the association graph inside our browser. We can interact with the graph by clicking on each node. If, if we click on GDOR, it will highlight all of the techniques it just used in our demo. If we click on the technique, it will highlight the related malware and evidence. If we click on the evidence, it will highlight the technique it can detect and the forensic tool to generate such evidence. We can also increase our step to 2. So if we click on the forensic tool, it will show the evidence it collects as well as the technique it detects. So this is the demo of running GDOR inside our cyber range. Finally, my partner will conclude our talk.
In conclusion, all attack defense association graphs can be a guideline and assessment tool to evaluate performance of red blue team tools. With our red team emulation tool and blue team toolkit, the exercise can be conducted easily. Our cyber range could be useful in red blue team training, cyber exercise, and security product testing. Here is the red team and blue team tool we mentioned in our talk. Enjoy it. Thank you for listening. If you have any question, please ask us through HITV's Discord channel or email to our address below.